Yeah. You will never see me leave a single weight out, mainly because I manage gyms for so long. I know what a big pain in the ass this is. Right. Where people, for some reason, here's a real common one. They'll take all the weights off except for one plate. It's like, why leave the one? Like, take them all off, right? Yeah. Or even worse, they leave it completely on. Like, yeah. you go to the leg press and there's 10 plates on each side. And then some lady wants to use it. And you're like, really? You know, she's got to take all these weights off now just to do her exercise. Like, put your stuff away. Or dumbbells that are all over the place or mismatched. Oh, my God, this is such a, a pain in the ass. And this you could tell a good gym from a bad gym by how bad this is. All right, check this out. Uh, I know the gym that you go to has rules on the contract, but there are unwritten rules that are true for every single gym. And today, we're going to teach you all of those rules you're welcome. We need to remind everybody. Get a yes. pen and paper. Now the gyms are packed again. Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, you don't see a lot of these rules written anywhere. But if you work out in gyms long enough or you manage gyms like we did, mm -hmm. these are real rules. It's like, uh, what, what do you call it? Gym etiquette, etiquette or uh, the unsaid, unspoken rules. Like yeah, these well, are agreements. I, I mean, you have to teach common sense. Like Common sense is gone. It's a thing of the past. Yes, yes. You literally have to like explain why now. Yes, and a lot of these I've had to actually talk to members about in the gym. It's not all of them. Some of them you don't really want to approach someone to talk to them about. Yeah. But a lot of them. So let's start with the first one, which sounds obvious, but which you would think, oh, this is super obvious, but apparently it's not because this always happens. Mm. Don't be smelly. Yeah. Don't be smelly when you go to the gym. So my first, one of my Do first clients that I ever inherited uh, was this guy who didn't wear deodorant, and it was part of his his culture not to. Mm. Uh, and he was uh, adamant about it. Now he smelled so bad that when I would come in for our session, like walk in the front. This was Capital McKee days when I'd walk into the gym. I would know he was there. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I know. Like that. I didn't know this brand. No, it was that. Uh, it was so like we. Um, so many members complained about it too. It was uh, like we would we and I had to train him. So I'm like spotting him and running through all the time. It was so. Did rough. you say anything? Brutal. No, I was so young, dude. I was only. This is my. You weren't thing. like you know. We, we're gonna train outside from now on. It's really good for you. No, I, mean, I didn't, have, I didn't even breeze. have access to do that. Where what I did do is that if you've been to Capital McKee, right before you get to back to the bathrooms, all the way in the back, there's this long hallway. And we would go in there and just, I would train by myself there. So I'd suffer for the entire hour. Did you try to hug you when you say bye? No. <laughs> it was, it was definitely not Fist like bump. that. Yeah. No, we had, um, we had this one member. You guys probably know him because we all worked in the same gym. Not at the same time, but this guy was a longtime member. And he would, he would get on the Stairmaster. It's all he ever did. And he'd put towels on the floor all around him. And he would sweat. And he wore the same workout clothes every time. And I know he didn't wash them. Because he would smell so bad and he'd go in there and he'd do his cardio. And I actually had to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I actually took him aside and I said, hey, man, um, I'm not going to say his name because I knew his name. But I said, hey, listen, you, I, I love that you're consistent. We value you quite a bit. You come in, you work out all the time. You know, you're a great guy and everything. But and I said, this is really embarrassing for me to say to you, but you're, you smell offensive. And wow. yeah, so you know, it's a hard conversation. A really hard conversation. I, yeah, I, I avoided that a few times as, as working. Uh, with clients and at the gym, but um, I I remember taking this guy aside and telling him when I was just a member of a gym, which this guy was always wearing a tank top and would always do pull-ups. I'm like, could you not pick a worse exercise and a worse outfit <laughs> to exposed. highlight your body odor and offend everybody in here? <laughs> and like, I, I actually, like, because it happened multiple times, like the first two I let it slide, and then I actually had deodorant in in my bag in the locker room. So I went and grabbed that and I handed it to him and didn't say anything. And the guy was like confused. I'm like, please use this. Dude, oh, wow. We we uh sprayed deodorant under a guy's arms doing shoulder press one time. What? Yeah, because he was it was really bad. <laughs> it's like a lawsuit waiting <laughs> oh, to happen. Oh, it totally <laughs> is. This is bad management on yeah. my part. I was young, I was 19 years old as a kid. And we told him, and it didn't matter. He's, and so my, I had my trainer go up to him, and I said, just when he does a press, just, just underneath. Oh, my God. And Yeah, yeah. don't do that. No, don't, don't do, do that. that. But anyway, I, I, along be aware. Lines, don't I'll, be smart. Yeah, be aware. And here's one of the common ones that I think even uh, somebody who has good hygiene uh, doesn't realize this happens, is gloves get stinky. Yeah. Really yeah, bad. Yeah. So if you're a glove wearer when you, when you go to the gym – be be careful because that'll creep up on you. You you won't even have them that long. But if you had enough intense workouts wearing gloves, that sweat and leather 
is an awful combination and yeah. will stink like you stink. Yeah. So pay attention to that if you wear gloves. There's nothing more embarrassing than wearing gloves when you work out except that the gloves smell. It's <laughs> yeah, the only it's, more it's embarrassing the only thing. thing. <laughs> Double whammy right there. <laughs> Don't wear <laughs> gloves. Jeez. It's already bad you're wearing you gloves doing? and then they smell. All right, that. so here's the next one. And this one is interesting. And I don't know if this happens in the, women, in the women's locker room because I've never been in the women's locker room. But this happens in the men's <laughs> locker room a lot, especially nice. when I used to manage gyms. Members would come up to me on the workout floor sometimes, but never would members come up to me and talk to me more than when they were in the locker room naked. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I'd be in there just doing my walkthrough, and dude comes up. And by the way, old men do this. It's and, an old man thing. Yeah. And this is what they do. Old men will put their shirt on, put their socks on, everything except for the bottom half of their whatever. And yeah. so they walk up to me, and I, I mean, it's it's a T-shirt, so it's kind of barely covering things. Yeah. Just, you know, stuff hanging out. Like, hey, Sal, what's going on? Yeah. Hey, so... uh. What about the pool? Yeah. Is, is that going to get fixed soon? Or what's going on with that machine? Or, you know, it looks Did like it's pretty busy. you see Tiger Woods the other day? And it's just like, you know, just wafting yeah. it in front of me. Super uncomfortable. I, I don't think it's appropriate to walk up to anybody and talk to them while you're naked. But don't do it at the gym. I'm, con I'm gym. convinced that's a, it's, an, it's an alpha thing. <laughs> it's like you know, to show I, you I what time it is. Yeah, dude, because it's it's like, always the old guy. Not young teenage boys do that. Like it's yeah. like, or young guys even do that. It's like an old man thing. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm the I'm the old gorilla in here. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> the old and you in know case what? you didn't know, that's you, brilliant. It, it's totally it. that. What an alpha they even, move. They even do like the stances. They even put like one leg up on the yeah, yeah, dude. Like, so how you doing, Sal? Yeah, yeah. And you're just like. And he's like, I showed him. Yeah. You know? it's, wow. I didn't I, even think of that. I'm way. convinced that's what it is. I don't know if I'm old enough to pull that yet. I'm going to try that next time. The guy <laughs> that guy, me. Dude, I had an old guy one time trying to ask me all this like training advice. He was like butt naked. And he was just like, Yeah, I saw you out there with your clients. And can you show me this? Stuff? I'm like, I'll show you another time. You know? Yeah. Like, I'll show you out there on the floor. And I think like <laughs> he was like trying to get me to, to break it down had, in I, there. I had a member one time and I just, I told him, like, Don't, what are you doing? Don't do that. He always tried to talk to me when he was in the locker room, and he he tried to give me the high five hug. You know, guys go like this and then do the hug, mm -hmm. but he had nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bring no, he in. does one Can of I these. Keep the hips back. Yeah. And I went like this, the fist bump, and I'm like, I'm not hugging you. You're naked. <laughs> oh my bad, my bad. It's yeah. a, this this same guy, by the way, too. This same guy dries his junk off in the air dryer. Yeah, yeah. or the air blower, whatever you call it. Thing. That. This is this is like you're, international. I don't know. Yeah, what you're, that the is air about. is now circulating in the air that's now been blown off. Yeah, your balls. Yeah, that's yeah. not that's not cool. And I mean, gr granted, they're probably clean because they just came out of the shower, but it's still weird. I don't care. Yeah. It's it's still weird. You know, dude, I've seen some. I have walked in and seen like you know dudes we had signs. bending over, spreading their ass cheeks, and drying off wow. their. You know, we had signs. We had signs in in two of the clubs I ran, and I had to put yeah, signs up. We did too, and I literally put on there: hand dryers are for hands only. Mm -hmm. I had to put that up there just because I, I was like, what do you guys? And, and they're positioned for hands, so they have to get in weird positions to drive themselves anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of weird. All right, this next one, this one's a little bit more important. Um, and a lot of people don't realize this unwritten rule. And there's a couple parts to it. So we'll start with the first part, which is if you're working out at a gym, especially if it's busy, let people work in. Okay, so if you're on a machine or you're doing squats or bench press or whatever, and somebody's like waiting or wants to whatever – Allow them to work in. So while you're resting, they do a set. Now here's the kick. Here's the the key to it. Whoever's working in, if you started the set and you're the first one to use that machine or that 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 piece of equipment, the person working in is responsible for taking the weight off and putting it back on, or changing the weight or the adjustment and putting it back on. That's their responsibility. So that's the other part of it. Oh. But let people work in. I I, I think it's so. It's such bad etiquette to do five sets on a machine, have someone wait. And to not allow them to do a set while you rest and do nothing. Because you see these guys now, especially with cell phones, people are texting in between sets. And it's like, uh, dude, I want to use that machine. Let me let me come in. Yeah, you're wasting everybody's time. I mean, it's that's just the thing. I think not a lot of people know about that. They don't. And Most people don't know. Yeah, yeah. To, to even ask for that. And yeah. I think that's something that, yeah, that needs to be expressed you know, to new members especially. Like, hey, because it, it is frustrating, especially going peak hours all of your plans for like machines a lot of times that gets interrupted because you know people will be like that they'll be on their phone in between every set they'll be doing five six you know seven sets of the same thing and you're like when is this person ever going to stop but you can ask politely like hey man can i can i work in yeah. and can well, I, get a set? I feel bad for the beginner that 
one, doesn't know that, or two, is relatively new and then had a bad experience asking somebody the first time. Yeah. So then they yeah. just assume like, Some people oh, are dicks about it. Yeah, yeah. no, there's people, and that's the point of this like episode, right? Is to tell, is really to be speaking to the dicks more than it is to be talking to the people that should know, like, you know, by the way, you should be able to do this. Yes, that does, doesn't mean though that you might run into somebody who is a dick that thinks that they have the right to that machine and they're going to use I, it for the next I got 15 e to 20 ego minutes. checked hard yeah. with this once. Like hard. I was maybe 15 or six, it was probably 16 and I'm doing squats and a woman came up to me and said, do you mind if I work in? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And I go to take the weight off. She goes, no, 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 leave it on. And she does more reps than me. And I remember being, <laughs> it was such an ego check as a, as a teenage boy mm -hmm. that this woman could, you know, and she was built, she'd been working out for a long time, but still, you know, you're a guy and you, your ego is sensitive, right? Especially at that age. Uh, but it was, but I let her work in or whatever. She ended up becoming cool, and we end up, you know, being friends or whatever. So I do think there's a little bit of a a gray area here, or I think we, uh, an area where we can elaborate. I think for a certain, like if you, I even though it's okay, I still think that you should be mindful of something like that. If I mean that ended up working out in the yeah, because they have to change the weight. Yeah, but like so, if you are a 17 year old kid and you squat 135, and the power lifter in the gym is moving 450, yeah. and you want to come in and you want to work in with him, like, you better move the weights fast. You better take the weights off and yeah. put them on fast. And it's not very realistic right. you're to move 450 pounds off a bar in right. and out, right? So be mindful of who you go work in, and then how much you plan to change. What Like if you get into a, a fixed hoist shoulder press machine that has literally okay. like yeah, you know, like a pen and like a seat adjustment, that's not a big deal. Yeah. But if you get into like maybe even like a free motion machine that moves arms all different directions and you're, you're changing all the settings or you use a cable machine and someone's pulling it from the bottom and now you want to move it up and change weight, like – be mindful of like you what you're doing and like how the time in between rest periods that someone's rest periods may only be one minute long, maybe even a little less. And now you're working in and you're completely changing the weight I'm, out. I'm glad you said that. It's the responsibility of the person working in to match the rest periods of the person that they jump into. Yeah. It's number one. Number two, it's your responsibility to put the weight back and the adjustments back to where they were before. And if it's not feasible, like if I'm doing a 500 pound deadlift and someone wants to jump in and put 135 on, right. probably not feasible unless you can hustle your ass. No way. And make you that cannot, you no, cannot think about that. You cannot it. strip and put on back. Okay. Cause right. they got to break it down. And don't ask me to help you, by the way. Now, yeah. I usually will because yeah. I'm cool. But that's when you work in, you're assuming that responsibility. That's and the and, and the, to my point, I, I think that there's there's an etiquette point there on that person's right, right? So so good gym etiquette is that you should allow people to work in. Well, the person who's asking to work in should also be mindful yeah. of what you are about to go use of theirs. Like you shouldn't, or like taking like someone's using a like easy curl bar and they're doing school crushes and you want to strip it all down and use it for something else. Yeah. Like you know, be mindful of what if you're if someone's doing the exact exercise you want to do and they're relatively close. They don't have to be that close, but relatively close to the weight and how you're going to use it. Like, okay, that's fine. But if you're going to take the equipment or take the machine and completely manipulate it or change it and your guys' weight discrepancy is yeah. huge, you got to be mindful of that. Yeah, if like, uh, yeah, if, if, if there's a guy there like in sort of, what do you call those, like onesie, like, like <laughs> in a power lifter uniform, you know, and he's like smacking chalk and he's got a ton of weight and you're just trying to come in there. Like, you got to know like the the seriousness of of somebody like really getting after it and like you know you can obviously yeah. see that you know it's going to interrupt but nine out of ten times though it's a machine that's being used you, and there is only one of that machine in your regular commercial setting you're not going to run into a lot of those exactly so. exactly i All mean right. squat racks are common too though because there's a there's minimal squat they're starting racks to are, become you're right yeah it yeah. wasn't it like used that to not be that way before no, but by the, by, back in the that's day that's why i wanted to bring up the squatting and deadlifting thing because it has become popular that i mean at least my, my you know, last years of being in the gym, uh, many times if I came in there at a popular time, I'd, and this was back at Gold's that had five platforms and five squat racks, and I know that I'm deadlifting or squatting as my first thing, and I walk in, and they're all taken. So I would have to, you know, and what I would always do is I would look and see who's doing what and who is probably going to be moving similar weight to me. And that would be the person or someone who I think is maybe on maybe their last set. And I might walk up and be like, hey, how many more sets do you have yeah. left? And if they only got one or two more sets, maybe I'll wait and then, you know, maybe I'll go warm up a little bit and then I'll go jump over and get right there. now. Here's a, here's one that is often written on the wall of a gym. Um, and it's uh, this is more of a known rule. And yet people still. Don't do it. Yo, what's up, everybody? Do you want to get strong? 
Well, that's good because we're going to give away MAPS Strong. This is a strongman-inspired, unconventional lift workout program. Very good for building muscle, especially in the posterior chain. That's the backside of your body, starting from the traps all the way down to the calves. Great program. You can get it for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section that you got free access to MAPS Strong. Also, we got a sale going on right now. The RGB bundle is 50% off. That includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic, plus some more free stuff. So that's half off. And then we also have an individual MAPS program that's on sale, MAPS Suspension. It's a suspension trainer program. All you need are suspension trainers, and you can train your entire body. Great program that's also 50% off. Here's how you can sign up. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code July 50 for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. Yeah. You will never see me leave a single weight out, mainly because I manage gyms for so long. I know what a big pain in the ass this is. Right. Where people, for some reason, here's a real common one. They'll take all the weights off except for one plate. It's like, why leave the one? Like, take them all off, right? Yeah. Or even worse, they leave it completely on. Like, yeah. you go to the leg press and there's 10 plates on each side. And then some lady wants to use it. And you're like, really? You know, she's got to take all these weights off now just to do her exercise. Like, put your stuff away. Or dumbbells that are all over the place or mismatched. Oh, my God. This is such a, a pain in the ass. And this, you can tell a good gym from a bad gym by how bad this is. This is such a headache in gyms. And, and it's uh, a consistent problem. It blows my mind, too, because most of us are in there are to, super to, get in be, to get in better shape. And carrying your weight back is only going to burn more calories and build more strength. So freaking do the work. Yeah, do the work and and put it back. I remember. Uh, I'll never forget doing this. This was this was pretty epic. It was in my early years. It wasn't my idea. It was actually uh, one of the front desk guys who had been like one of those old powerlifter guys, and he worked front desk just so he'd get a free membership. And he'd been in there forever. And so it, and he worked the night shift, and I also worked late a lot of times. And he would get pissed when he'd come in there at like ten, eleven o'clock, and no, not a single dumbbell was on the rack, and it was just a mess. And we would announce it. Over the loudspeaker, re rack your weights, re rack your weights, and then finally one time he says, "You know what? Fuck this. We have to we have to teach these guys to teach each other to do it because we can't manage every single person yeah. here." So it's prime hours. It's like six, seven o'clock at night, right? He takes the caution tape and he cautions off the entire weight room and gets on the loudspeaker and clear everybody clear out of the weight room, please, right now. And he clears, stops everyone working out. And then makes everybody watch us re rack the weights, and then tells everybody going oh, forward, yeah, I come in this weight room at this time of the hour, and if weights like this, we're gonna stop everybody's workout every fucking time until you guys learn to re rack your weights. Like, oh yeah. shit! <laughs> but I tell you what, but it made a huge difference because then you started to see the other members managing the members. They would watch somebody else. And, Yo, where before members would be like, oh whatever, not say anything. They'd leave it for the staff. It's a culture. Because some okay, yeah. here's and by the way, part of this problem. And part of the reason why it's good to do this episode is that some of some members actually think that's the job of the people that work there. Mm -hmm. Their job is to re rack the weights because they see trainers and people in uniform. I've never all. been to a gym where that's the job of the staff. It isn't the job no. of the staff. And but it, it, okay, remember we just you just recently talked in an episode about a guy who was increasing the weight on the the, the gravitron, thinking that he was getting stronger <laughs> because it was helping him more. Right? People are that clueless. Yeah. That they assume, oh, these people are on the clock. They have their uniforms on. They're floating around. They see them re-racking weights. And so some of these idiots actually think that, like, oh, that's their job. I just go lift weights. And I can just leave them wherever. And then someone's paid to come pick it up. And it's like, no, those are people that are going out of their way to, to pick One of the things I up. look at in a gym when I'm when I'm looking to you – know, because I, I see it through the lens of uh, gym manager, gym owner. Um, and I'm sure whatever profession you're in, if you walk into the, a profession as a consumer, you just see it differently, right? So if you're a police officer, you get pulled over, you can see things differently. You know, if you're a doctor and you go to the doctors, you see things differently. Well, when I'd walk into gyms, I could judge pretty quickly if it's got a good culture. One of them is a the front desk. That's a whole different conversation. But another one is how much of the weights are put away. Mm -hmm. When I walk in and I see, you know, plates on, on, you know, machines and dumbbells off or whatever, I know the culture of that gym sucks. Yeah. Because a good gym culture, which by the way, this can exist in a hardcore gym. You can have a good culture in a commercial gym. It's mm -hmm. all about the way the staff creates the culture and what they enforce and then and then the members themselves. If I walk in and I see equipment all over the place, I know it's a crappy culture. And I probably am not gonna like working out there. And that's one really easy sign is how much do the members respect the gym? 
that they're working out. That's in. a really good point because it is. Yeah. It's a sign it's of a leader. Thing. It's a, li- a sign of leadership in there. Somebody has built that culture that has Correct. taught not only the staff that they all help and, and pick up, and then that's bled into the members that are in there. It's a really good sign of a good gym. Yeah, you'll you see trainers inside. leave equipment out in gyms like that. Yeah, you know, which yeah. is oh my god. If you were a trainer, you work for me, you yeah. left equipment out, yeah. you're fired yeah. right yeah. away. Yeah. All right, so here's another one which sounds obvious. But I remember at one point when I was managing gyms for 24 Hour Fitness way back in the day. So we're looking at, I don't know, 1999, maybe 2000. This became such an issue that we actually developed a rule around it. Um, And and this is the rule that is uh, you need to wipe up your sweat after you're done using a piece of equipment. Sounds obvious, okay? But it got so bad at one point that 24 Hour Fitness back then passed a rule. And they said, you must have a workout towel with you. When you work out, if you do not have a workout towel, you're not allowed to work out. So either you have one or you buy one at the front desk. Now, I remember when this rule took place, we actually got a lot of conflict from members where people would walk in. Where's your towel, sir? I don't have one. Well, you have to buy one. And they just ignore the front desk person, walk by or be a jerk or whatever. This became confrontational for like a few months in one of the gyms that I managed because the culture before was leave sweat everywhere. It took like two or three months before this became regular. And I remember that two or three month period, there were like two or three in your face confrontations with members, which I thought was silly. Like, why would you think to leave your filth on a piece of equipment that you're using with other people? I I actually yeah. was a part of the transition of the, the before and after also. I was there early years. In fact, um, one of the thing like signature like looks that I had was I, I wore a towel, like almost like a quarterback did over in, and, I started doing that because mm. I had clients and that would became like even my own clients who were being paid and I'm telling them would forget because I was during the time of before and after like when nobody was told to do that and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden we're telling the people that so I began to carry the towel myself so in case they forgot I would wipe it up and that's how that started but that was a hard transition to get people to remember do that? that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, people ex- again, uh, the culture me- was one yeah, way. They assume I mean, it's going to get cleaned up. Uh, well, that them. and That's- members assume that if you want that done, then you provide a towel service. But what you don't realize is you're paying such a low membership fee for a gym like a 24 hour fitness. This is not a spa. You go to a spa like you were going to Club One. They provide the towels. Yeah. yeah. And they have a, a laundry service, and it's expensive to maintain that. Extremely. Yeah. You're not you're not getting a, a 19 19 dollar a month membership and getting a towel. No, you'll service. pay ten times as much. Yeah. For that. Yeah. So you're not. So you got to understand that if a, if you're paying that low in a gym, because that's the other thing too. You get asshole members who expect that they think that like, oh, I have this membership, I pay mm-hmm. for this membership. You should provide that stuff. It's like that's why you pay nineteen dollars and you don't pay one hundred twenty dollars to go to like a club, you know, a club whatever, club sport. one or sport, club sport that is like a you know a spa where yeah. they do that. Type now of stuff. I do think that this has become much more of an issue after the, after COVID. I think now all gyms are like really big about it and members are too. Sure. I see people. Now more than ever, is a well, huge most spraying equipment down and cleaning it after the dump. So yeah. most gyms now have, and most of your commercial gyms have. If you don't provide a towel service, you've now put the towels in a in a spray bottle in stations yeah. all over the gym. or dispensers of like uh, th- those wipes or whatever. I've seen that too. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's now so that's that's pretty prevalent in in most gyms now. That I mean, I mean, obviously. If I'm the member or if I'm talking to my audience, I'm bring a towel, bring a small, you know, you know, uh, hand towel and carry it with you. And then you just wipe your, you know, your own thing off. So you don't have to go over the spray machine and do totally. that all the time. All right. So here's another one that um, uh, isn't 100 percent across the border rule. There are exceptions, but we'll explain them here in a second, which is don't drop your weights on the floor when you're done working out with them. And I, I would always tease members who did this and say, if you're, you're not strong enough to lower the weight properly, then you shouldn't be lifting that much. Throwing weights on the floor is not only dangerous, it's also lazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also not respecting the equipment. Like I wouldn't throw uh, you know, lots of pieces of equipment down on the floor for potentially damaging the equipment. Now, here's the exceptions. You're working out on a you know a weightlifting platform. platform. That's the only and bumper place. plates. That's right? the only. Bumper that's where you're supposed to drop. Weightlifting platform. Yeah, that's, yeah it. that's it. That's it. I mean, to me, that's that's it's an easy thing to know where you can and you can't. <laughs> if you're on a weightlifting uh, platform, it's designed for t- to take mm-hmm. that. You know. I saw somebody actually uh, yeah, break the floor. Somebody actually broke someone else's foot in one of the gyms I managed. Yeah, dropping like 120 pound dumbbells. And it, you know, it flips and rolls. It's common on the bench press. You see this all the time. You see guys max dumbbell pressing. And then they and they can't get the last rep of the one twenties, and they just they drop yeah. them off. There's the a time. way, by the way, because I get this. If you're handling really heavy weights, it's like it's really hard to lower them super slow. But there's a way to let them fall 
where it's still under your control. And then right. there's the way where people literally it's guided at least you yes, know, by your arms. where they literally drop them and they end up flipping and rolling a couple times, which you hurt somebody that way. Yeah, and I also think that if you if you're lifting dumbbells so heavy that you can't you can't get it back up to get on your knees and then roll out of it, like you don't you don't belong lifting yeah. that weight yet, dude. Yeah. Well, the only like, time this is acceptable really is at your home. You know, your home gym. <laughs> you do whatever the hell you want at home. Yeah, do I don't give a shit. Break you, can, you, can, you can walk around naked and yeah. leave your sweat everywhere. <laughs> Roll <laughs> weights, <laughs> destroy your own house, you know, go for it. But, like, when you're sharing a, a community in a community and you're trying to, you know, maintain the culture of everybody else around you, you got to be considerate of yeah. everybody else. That's just, I mean, I've so seen, cool. I've actually seen dumbbells break from yeah. people dropping them from dumbbell pressing, yep. you know, he like a heavy 120s like that. And it just, it hit just right and wrong. And that's so much weight. It's snapped it. Snapped I remember back in the day when I used to deadlift, back when deadlifts were not popular. So this is when I was the only one ever deadlifting in the gym. And the plates that we had were those stupid hexagons. Yeah. Which I that's the worst place to deadlift with because you put it down the floor and it shifts the weight and then you got to readjust or whatever. And um, I mean I I you know now I use bumper plates so I can drop the weight if I need to. But I would put them down carefully because especially if I drop one of those because of the shape of the plates, it would shift or twist and I would hurt myself if yeah. I wasn't careful. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, I mean even like to your point with the dumbbells like slamming down. I remember it l loosened it up yeah. to where the next member use it and like it came apart while they're lifting the weight. So you just oh, set somebody crap. else up yeah. uh, for potential injury. Oh, yeah. crap. All right, here's another one. I hate this one. Sometimes it still happens to me. Don't talk to people mid-set. If they're in the <laughs> middle of an exercise, yeah. don't approach them and start. They're con you need to concentrate and focus on what you're doing. And I've had people do this to me where I'm in the middle of a set and someone starts talking to me and I've literally said, shut up. Like, just look straight at and shut up because it's it's distracting. And I, to me, it's strange. What makes you think it's a good idea to talk to yeah. someone when they're working while they're in the middle of working? I, out? This is a tough one because it's it's uh, it's less of a gym etiquette thing and it's more of a self and social awareness thing. This is like the same person who's like the close talker or the same person who just doesn't, <laughs> doesn't get the sign that you're not wanted to be here right now. Like it's that it's that same person. They don't like pick up on it. Because, at all. Yeah, because I feel like before you even say something like shut up or you become an asshole, like your body language is already telling oh, yeah, you that's... you're not interested in talking to me. I'm talking to you. You're not even looking at me anymore. You're starting your curls or whatever you're doing. It's like I would pick up on that signal like, oh, he he wants to get his workout in and be like, oh, hey, I'll talk to you later, bro. But some people are so oblivious and so uh, unsocially aware that they don't pick up on that. So it's to me, it's less of an etiquette thing and they don't even, that's more of a, this person needs to work on their yeah. self-awareness. You, know, you know what reminds me of, you know when you're at the dentist and the, you, the, the dentist has your mouth open oh, yeah, and yeah, they're yeah. putting stuff in there. They ask funny. you like, Hey, so how's your weekend? <laughs> 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 I, I just had dental work done not that long ago and I, I it's so funny you bring that up because I was thinking the same thing too. I'm like, like, why are you, on your why, own spit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why are you asking me questions? And then, and then too, like you'll ask me a question and then like in two seconds later, be, hold on, hold on, and then she'll be doing something. I'm like, you just asked me yeah. something. Like, it has to be all rhetorical questions. Yes, you, know, you yes. just answer your own. Yeah. I just answer like, hey, yeah. hey. that's yeah. all I say. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I love it. All right, here's another one. Uh, we just talked. I mean, the first one was don't be smelly. This is part of it. Don't wear a lot of perfume or cologne when you're working out. This is super annoying. It gives people headaches. It makes me nauseous. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna this. add to that. That's like. I, and I don't know if this falls under genetic kit or it's just like, uh, and so, so I think there's like getting ready, like, and this happens a lot. Like you see girls, do, guys do it too though. Guys and girls both do, it, but girls, you see oh, there's some when, obnoxious clones. when you're, there. when you are, when you put on makeup to go to the gym, like you put on like a bunch of makeup. Like I understand you, if you came straight from work, that's totally different, right? Coming from work and you worked all day and you, oh, you could tell people get ready for the gym. It's oh weird. yeah. You could definitely tell. And, or, and you intentionally, you, you don't, uh, wear a hair tie and you wear your hair down and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. there's things where you can see where somebody, and they, and it's repeated. Like, it's like, oh, every, every, I'm sure every woman has forgot a hair tie. I'm sure she's come straight from work before, but then there's like the, the girl who consistently comes and who is completely made up as there is the guy who does the same thing, who gets his hair all done, like all nice. And he's got his <laughs> outfit that matches and it's perfect and stuff like that. And yeah. I get, you feel good. You look good. I get that whole, that whole thing. But there's a point to that where I think it's a little ridiculous when you're putting on cologne and perfume and you think you're going to the nightclub versus Dude, you're going to the I gym. would rather, I'm going to say a controversial statement. I would rather work out next someone next to someone with like moderate 
BO than strong cologne or perfume. The cologne or perfume makes me nauseous while I'm oh, working out. I would out. agree with that because I'm really and, sensitive like dizzy to and nauseous. Yeah, with yeah it. I'd, I'd agree with that. And so, yeah, don't do that. Don't spray like these strong smells on you and then work out because well, it messes people up. To kind of add to that, uh, there's also been issues for me as like um, some people like bring their lunch. Uh, <laughs> it, in the weight room, yeah. Yeah, like and they're eating, and they, you get all these disgusting. That's like, like a bodybuilder thing, right? Dude, sloppy and rice. What are you so, doing, bro? Doing, so, dude. Get out of here. I'm gonna that's call so my bodybuilder buddies out for that one. I want to slap like, people that's, at that's, because they don't want to miss the anabolic window. Yeah. I got yes, my food. Dude, oh, I just finished. Let's eat my no tilapia. No food in there, dude. Get out of here with that. That's oh, there was a guy that would uh, when I I worked out for a short period of time at Gold's, the same one you went to, Adam. And there was a dude that tilapia and broccoli, the yeah, I have, two I, worst foods. No, I had I hundred percent. My I have some friends that are super guilty yeah. of this, like because they and they would be in the gym for two and a half, three hours. That's why, yeah. and yeah. they eat every two hours. They eat every two hours, and they and because they're eating so many calories, and so they would absolutely have one or two meals prepared in their gym bag, and they would stop. They might as well just sleep in the locker room. Yeah, you know, one hundred. It's, it's their house. <laughs> you know, so. Now it's their house. All yeah. right, so this next one. You know, it was always kind of an issue, but not a huge issue. Then CrossFit happened. Yes. And, <laughs> and, all, and all of a sudden- This is the bad thing that came for. We, oh, we give them the credit for the squats and the deadlifts, making yes, it popular again. But don't hoard a bunch of equipment and dumbbells. And I mean, CrossFit happened, and all of a sudden, you'd see members with like six different pieces of equipment and exercise strung together. Like, yeah. these are mine. I'm doing my giant circuit doing with this. handstand walking in your way. Like, like, dude, get out of here. No, don't hoard crap. If you're going to use a bunch of stuff, so I'll sometimes I've done giant sets, but I also accept that if somebody grabs something, that I'm, I'm not going to hoard it. Somebody grabs it, I'm going to figure out an alternative. I'm not going to go be like, that's mine. Okay, right? so where this happens, and I'm just, okay, this and, and CrossFit is really guilty for a lot of people doing this. It's not, it doesn't mean that other people don't too, but. They are following a wad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let's say like that wad requires 80 for their strength, 80 pound dumbbells. And they also have to do pull-ups and deadlifts and some other, and a rower or something yeah. like that. They bring it all over to that area. Yep. So they, But now they've got the 90 pound dumbbells for the next 22 minutes or yeah. wherever it takes to get this and wad And then they done. go out on like a couple mile run yeah. <laughs> yes. and leaving all that shit there yeah. for nobody like to use. And they come back, hey, hey, I'm working yeah. here. Do you know what I used to do? So I'm an asshole like this. Go join a CrossFit club. No, what I used to do, <laughs> go get a box. What I always, what I used to do is I would see this happen, well, and it was go it's literally all of it. like supersets. Fine, two exercises, no big deal. And then again, if you're going to use multiple machines or exercises, leave them where they're at. You travel to go that's, get it. Yeah, you travel, go get it. And if someone's using it, then you figure it out. That's the way I would do so it. So that's my point. But I, right. the reason why they don't is because you know CrossFit's for time. That's okay. Yeah. So you're they're, not, they're, they're, go to they're, a CrossFit try, box. they're trying to improve their time, and that's how that's why that happened was because it's a time thing, and that's wasted time to walk over and get the dumbbells. So they would want to put it. In that's their okay. Session. You're sharing a gym with a bunch of other people. This yeah. is not a CrossFit gym. No, I agree. So, that's why it should be talked yeah. about because it's not be, okay. Yeah, be considered. Go to so a what, fucking CrossFit what, box if you want to do that. Yes. So what I used to do when people would do that is I would purposefully, purposefully. Yeah, re their shit. I would go and or use, use whatever. You, yeah. yeah, I'd wait. I'd wait. Oh, he's about to use it. And I'd go over there and start doing some shrugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'd just yeah. get in their way. I know. I'd do yeah. the same thing. Or I'd bring a client over there. We're going to use this machine today. Yeah. Yeah. And just wait for them to just get annoyed and be yeah. like, I please say I something needed to this. me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. I needed it. I hate that. <laughs> uh, but that wasn't a thing. CrossFit happened. Then it became a big thing for a little while. Yeah. Not so much of a thing, and that is, so under the hoarding equipment is the same category too, and the same. It's a different type of person, but is also guilty of like sitting on the machine for you know twenty five, thirty minutes. You've seen that before, dude. Too. Before mm -hmm. this again, this was back in the Reading days. newspaper. Yeah. Yes, right. This is before oh, there's like, always a guy like that. Before smartphones were a thing, there were dudes that used to literally bring newspaper to the gym. They would do a set, and then they'd read the newspaper in between for like. I, I mean, ten minutes. I, I had a I had a lady one time that I had to check that used to read romance novels on the leg press. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. I swear to God, dude. She she get the leg press it fuels with, her fire, and we dude. only had like two leg press machines. You know what I'm saying? Of course, leg press is a, is a popular machine. Was it the one with your and, picture on it? She, <laughs> <laughs> this is before this is before my romance novel days, right? So she would sit there and she would read her romance novel, do a set of leg pressing, go back to read a chapter, and then go get. Bro, like, the, the worst, the worst. <laughs> the, the worst is I would see sometimes people read 
while doing the exercise. I've seen that too. I don't understand that. Same lady's done that. Actually. Yeah, like, what do you, yeah. how are you able how does to? That work? Yeah, how are yeah. you la- doing leg extensions while you're reading? Like, are you sure that's enough weight? Yeah, you might need to add the add a little weight. You might want to focus a little bit. All right. So this last one's kind of funny. It's kind of a joke, but uh, and this may be a personal one. I don't think anyone in this room likes this. I but, don't think it's a joke. Yeah, <laughs> this <laughs> might be. This is pretty. Yeah. It's serious for us. Yeah. But you know, there's a thing where where guys will wear really tight spandex workout pants and I'll wear them too because I like the way they feel when I work out my legs. However, I always either wear shorts shorts over them or pants over them. If you're going to wear tight ass spandex pants and you're a dude and you're a dude, wear something over it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to see, you know, we don't want to determine your we don't see the vein in your balls. Your, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I see bro, I've seen that before. I've had it and I've had members complain like like come like, to me loose and be like, knuckle and everything. Yeah, yeah, that it's that it was so fitted and so tight that they're like you have to get this guy out of the gym. Like this is so inappropriate. I can see the vein in his balls. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No, That's exactly how I approached him. I don't want to be able to know, so I don't want to be able to know your religion by looking at yeah, your pants. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh my guy. Yes. You're circumcised. Yeah. Please cover that up. Yeah. And that and that is a hundred percent guy thing. It's a guilty guy thing that does that. The guy, there's a handful of dudes that you'll find in a gym that absolutely do that. That will rock those spandex, and they're super, yeah. super tight. It's performance enhancement, or dude. Whatever. There was it's a like guy. Nuts. There was a guy that worked that, that used to work out one of my gyms. Used to wear a wrestling singlet. That's it. Oh, so yeah, it's like yeah, really tight, it. but just a wrestling singlet. He's just walking like, what's going on here, dude? Are we gonna do some wrestling? <laughs> wow. I sets. hate to try to throw that guy out. Yeah, that's another thing too. He had a cauliflower ear. Uh, yeah. He's cool. Yeah, he yeah, can work yeah. out. <laughs> anyway, there you have it. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So you can find Justin on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin, Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit. And that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go and do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.